Good morning, friends. Happy, happy Friday. It's just about 6.30 and I just got to my WW workshop, but I wanted to hop on really quick and let you guys know about my crazy week. So as I've mentioned, there is a lot of changes happening in my life. Last week was insane. Everything kind of hit me at once. This week was much more relaxed because my best friend flew in last Thursday and then left this last Tuesday. So we spent the entire weekend together. And let me tell you, she kicked my booty with exercise. We, you guys, there was so much exercise. So Friday, we went and hiked Tubbs Hill, which is a about two mile hike in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And it's a, it's a fairly easy hike. There is some hills and things. It's a fairly long hike. It was gorgeous. It's beautiful there. So we went ahead and we hiked there. I'm going to see if I can find some pictures. And if I can, I'll insert those here for you guys. But we hiked Coeur d'Alene gorgeous had a wonderful time we did pretty well on our eating on friday friday night we had a little girls night barbecue to our house at our my house and so that was really fun we kind of overindulged a little bit on friday kind of called that the day that we're using our points day saturday we got up and we went on a walk down by the river here where i live and it was supposed to be a two mile walk two mile hike it's easy. It was supposed to just basically be just a walk, essentially. So we go to do the walk and we turn apparently the wrong way and we ended up taking over a four mile walk, which is just fine. But it ended up being a lot more intense than what we had originally thought not a big deal. Sunday, we just went on a walk around my house. Sunday, we kind of took it easy. We were a little sore and tired from Friday and Saturday. And then Monday, we went to Harrison, Idaho and hiked a trail called Mineral Ridge. And literally, you guys, it is all uphill. You are climbing a mountain. Legit, seriously climbing a mountain. So we did that on Monday. It was rough. My calves were really sore. I actually had to stop and stretch them a couple times on the way up to the mount, top of the mountain. But once you got up there, it's absolutely gorgeous. So it was worth every single solitary, miserable minute getting up there. But I, and then, and then Tuesday we, uh, took it easy. We didn't do any exercise other than just kind of like running around and around the house type of things. But let me tell you guys, it is Friday and I am still sore. My calves hurt. Oh, I take that back. Tuesday we went to the gym. She drug me to the gym on Tuesday. So I did a 30 minute circuit workout. So I was thinking, wait a minute, I did work out on Tuesday. So my arms are sore from lifting weights. My legs are sore from the hike and then also doing the cardio at the gym. So it's Friday and I'm still sore. So Wednesday and Thursday, I didn't do any exercise. I was trying to make my body a little less sore, hoping to resolve a lot of the retention of water that I'm going to have in my muscles before I weigh in today. But then it gets better. On Monday, Shark Week starts. So not only am I crazy walking, hiking, exercising, Shark Week starts. So I'm bloated. I have cramps, TMI, but it's reality. And this is real life, guys. So yeah, it was a week, all right. So as of today, Friday, I'm still sore. Definitely not as sore as I was earlier in the week, which is a good thing. And Shark Week is still here. So welcome to my life. I don't know how it's going to go. I feel like I worked my booty off and I should lose like 15 pounds on the scale. But obviously that's not going to happen with Shark Week being here and the fact that I'm still a little bit sore from all the working out. So I don't know. My eating was pretty good this week. It definitely was not... 100%. I was extra hungry. And I'm sure it's because I did so much extra activity that I really, like, honestly didn't, I, I wasn't probably eating enough on my regular day-to-day -day eating. So I just felt like I was a little hungry. Plus, Shark Week will do that to you. But I ended up with over 300 fit points out of 50 this week. So it was crazy. I earned myself a lot of fit points. But let's see what the scale says with the water retention and being on Shark Week. But let's see what the scale says. I'm really happy with my week. I feel good. I feel like my body is toning up a little bit. It's actually starting to shrink down, even if I'm not seeing that on the scale from the exercise. You know, I walk most of the days of the week as it is. So I feel like my body is responding really well to the exercise, 
but the scale isn't always responding so well to the exercise. So we'll see what happens when I hop on. So I'm going to run in, go to my workshop, weigh in, and I'll be back to share all of the results with you as well as this week's topic. Hi guys, I'm out of my WW workshop and I am here to share with you the topic as well as my weigh-in update. So first, let's talk about the topic. Now, once again, it is insane to me. Once again, the topic is exactly what I needed. The topic of this week was all about activity. And as I mentioned before going into my workshop, I was the activity queen this last week. So much activity. I mean, this is the most that I've ever had on my journey so far. I actually really liked it and I'm going to continue with the activity. In fact, I'm thinking I may take a walk in the morning tomorrow. Like I mentioned, I'm still a little bit sore, but I kind of would like to go on a nice walk before I head to the grocery store tomorrow morning. So loving the activity and I want to share with you some of WW's tips and tricks as far as getting in some activity and maybe some new activity. With activity, what you're going to do for activity is just as important, if not more important than how are you going to incorporate that activity into your life. We all lead extremely busy lives, whether we work, we're stay-at-home moms, we have, you know, some sort of schooling that we're going to, we're all really busy. So it's just about incorporating activity into our lives, no matter how busy we are. So WW's first suggestion is choose when you're going to do your activity. Think about your day. What works best for you? Doing the activity first thing in the morning, doing the activity after work. What works best for you to make sure that you're able to get the activity in as often and for the duration that you would like in the days that you want to do your activity. Of course, it's recommended that you work out or have some sort of activity every day for 20 to 30 minutes, but three times a week is definitely right on track of where you should be as far as activity. So next, ask yourself, what gets in the way of you being active? What is it in your day-to-day -day life on a consistent basis that you find yourself not doing activity? Is it that you don't have time? Is it that you're not getting up early enough? You're too tired when you get home from work or school? And I would suggest that you take a time every day and you block it out strictly for activity. So I walk every morning at 5 a.m. and I walk from 5 to 5.45. It is what I do. My alarm is set for 5 a.m. during the week. I get up and I walk before I finish continuing it on with my day. So I have a set schedule for walking. And with being busy, that is the only way that you're going to consistently get an activity. That's why you find a lot of people have personal trainers or they have classes because it is a set block of time that they are to be doing their activity so that they remain consistent in doing their activity by having those set blocks of time. So pick a time that works best for you on a regular basis. Yes, life's going to get in the way things are going to happen where maybe that block of time doesn't work for one day or a series of days, but it is best to set yourself up for success by just selecting a time during the day that's going to work best on a regular basis for you to do your activity. Next up is take stock. Really think about what your time frame is for you and what's going to work for you during that time frame. You really need to select when you're going to work out before you decide what you're going to do to work out. So if you know for you the best time to work out for you is in the morning. So say 6 to 7 a.m. That is the time that you're taking stock in. That's what you're committing to. That's the time that you're going to work out. Then make a note of that and plan on that so that you can continue to work out every day or the days that you've chosen at that block of time. Now we're going to move into what we want to do. What activity is it that you want to do on a daily, weekly, semi-weekly basis? And lastly, select an activity routine. Now that you've determined the time that works best for you, now it's to determine the what. What are you going to do for your activity? So you are going to exercise four days a week from 6 to 7 a.m. Monday through Thursday. Those are your days that you've decided works best for your schedule that you can consistently do. Now, what are you going to do? If you are someone that needs accountability, you may want to join a gym and have a personal trainer that you meet with during that block of time. Maybe you want to commit to going to a class for that block of time. Or maybe like me, you just wanna set your alarm so you get up and you go on a walk 
those four days a week from 6 to 7 a.m. So do it for a couple of days, evaluate it, see if it works for you. I think the most important thing to do with activity guys is make sure that it's something not only that you enjoy because you're not going to stick with something that you don't like and also something that is going to work for your schedule. So reevaluate it after a couple of days, make sure you're enjoying it and that it's you feel that it's going to continue to work on a regular basis for you for your schedule. And there you have it. You have a plan for some activity. So definitely this week, my goal challenge to you is set up some activity. Maybe try something new or changing up your activity a little bit, but really set yourself a schedule for your activity. You'd be surprised by having that. Your mind automatically wants to get up get out and do that. For me, I'm just waking up by 5 a.m. every day and I just roll out of bed and get dressed and walk. That's just what I have to do. It's part of my routine. It's established into my routine now. So it makes it easy. It's not even a question for me. It's just something that I automatically do. So think about what activity you want to try this next week. Set yourself up a plan of attack and I want to hear about it down in the comments. Let me know what you think about maybe changing up your activity or setting yourself up for a schedule for activity. So now let's get into this week's weigh-in. So as I mentioned, I have been an activity fool for the last week. And I also mentioned that not only is it shark week, but I am sore. My calves are incredibly sore. My arms are sore. I'm sore. But I had a good week. Now, was my eating 100%? No, I was extra hungry with all of the activity, but did I go crazy and overboard? Absolutely, positively not. I definitely burned more calories than I consumed. I will tell you that for sure. So when I stepped on the scale, I actually gained 0.6. And let me tell you, this is the first time in my Weight Watcher journey that I've been legit disappointed in what I got on the scale. I definitely don't think I should have gained any weight. I literally exercised so much that I don't even think it's humanly possible to have gained weight. Even if I would have eaten terrible all week, I still shouldn't have gained weight because I burned so many calories. But because I didn't eat terrible, I burned all those calories exercising. I was pretty disappointed when I stepped on the scale. I was expecting to see some sort of a loss. But on the brighter side, on a side note, I'm also having shark week and I'm also sore. So maybe that little bit of a gain, I mean, it's about a half a pound. Maybe that is actually contributing that the soreness and the shark week is contributing to that because honestly, it's definitely not deserved this week. So I'm a little bit disappointed, I have to say. But I'm also excited for this next week because I'm hoping that I will see the results that I was hoping for this week on the scale next week. And to get myself kind of on a jump start, considering I maintained last week and I gained this week, to get myself kind of up starting and moving again, I'm going to be doing the Wendy plan again this next week. I had great success with it the last time I did it. I'll go ahead and insert the vlog of the Wendy plan right here for you guys. But I lost 2.4 pounds the week that I did the Wendy plan plan. I felt really in control. I felt really good. I was tracking everything. I didn't actually have a cheat day because I had to limit my points to remain in control and focused on the Wendy plan. So I'm going to do that again this week. We are going to dinner with some friends tonight. So this is going to be my high point day on the Wendy plan rather than tomorrow. I've already tracked my dinner. I looked it up. I'm having two slices of pizza and today I can eat between 50 and 53 points. So this is going to be my high day and I'm going to try the Wendy plan again to maybe like jumpstart, kickstart the weight loss again. And I'm going to exercise. I'm going to walk tomorrow, Saturday, and then I'm also going to walk Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I'll get in an extra day. Hopefully by then my muscles aren't as sore and I can just really boost the Wendy plan with the activity. So that's my plan. If you're interested in the Wendy plan, I have an entire vlog that explains it. And also there's a whole portion on my Facebook group that talks about the Wendy plan as well. So I'm going to be putting my Facebook group right here on the screen for you guys. So if you're not part of it, join my Facebook group, check out the Wendy plan. It's definitely used to break a plateau or to jumpstart your weight loss because essentially what it does is it shakes up your weekly 
points in your daily points divides them out over the week. So you're eating a different amount of points every day. Some days are high points, some days are low points, but it really just kind of shakes things up. So I'm going to try that again this week. I'm going to see if it makes any difference um, in the scale next week and continue on with my activity per WW suggestion. And again, I'm really liking my activity. So I'm hoping that this helps with a loss on the scale next week. So cross your fingers for me. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all your support. Don't worry. I'm not discouraged. I was just a little frustrated with the little bit of a gain on the scale, but I'm moving on. I'm actually over it. I'm ready. I'm ready for a new week. So if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a minute and subscribe, hit the little bell. So you're notified each and every time that I upload a new video, thumbs up this one, comment down below. I want to hear what's your plans for activity. And I also want to hear how your week went. Were you on track? Did you gain? Did you lose? Were you happy with what you saw on the scale? And was it deserved what you saw on the scale? Thank you guys again so much for watching. Thank you for all of your support. Let's kick this next week's butt and let's have a great loss on the scale. See you guys later. Bye.